Sutton. It's Wordsmith Extraordinaire. Kel Richards. Kel, welcome to the program. How are you? Super duper. Good to see you. Now, you're going to kick off with an odd one. Well, I got a fabulous email from a, a, a specky reader and a viewer of Credlin saying that weed has now been banished from the English language. Weeds are weed. now... Weed. Uh, weed. W, yes, W-W-E-D. Okay. Yep. It, they are now opportunist plants. Oh, no. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> it's hilarious. Now, the word weed has been part of the English language. It comes from Old English, so yep. more than a thousand years old. And the possibility of weed dying out is a bit like the possibility of the onion weed disappearing from my lawn, and neither <laughs> is going to happen. Um, so, opportunist... When the, the companies start putting opportunist plant killer and not oh, weed killer no. on their products, I'll believe it. It's not going to... I've got to tell you... Uh, one syllable is not going to become five syllables anytime soon. So imagine when you're looking in the opportunity <laughs> plant killer. Yeah, it doesn't work, does it? No, no, it doesn't work. Well, let's put an asterisk on that. In fact, let's do asterisks themselves. Th this viewer was concerned about the fact that, that in newspaper articles you will see F asterisk, asterisk, asterisk. And he said, look, Kel, we know what it means. We know what's being said. So why do they bother with all the asterisks? I think there are still people who are offended. Yep. You know, people who walk out of movies and say too many F words, that kind of thing. Uh, and, and so it's not pretending that it's another word. Everyone knows what it is. But it not appearing in print releases the offence. So it's not an attempt at secrecy. But I think it's a reasonable attempt at not giving any more offence. So not secrecy, but it's diminishing the offence. I think that's the yeah, intention. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, we do that in The Spectator, as you know. It's F dash dash dash. Yep. K or even Fing. I quite like effing, because at least it reads... That's right. It, sort of it flows, strange, and we yeah, know what flows. that means. Yep. And we all say the, we say the F word using that expression. That's, what, that's exactly. So we know what we're talking about, yes. OK, so let's take a rain check on asterisks in F words <laughs> okay. and do a rain check, Cal. So people keep saying to me, why do we say rain check? Where does it come from? Recorded in America first in 1886 comes from baseball, because in those days the big stadiums did not have roofs. They don't all got the roofs now, okay. which meant the games could be rained out. And so when you got your baseball game ticket, there was a ticket with a little stub at the end, and the stub was called the rain check. And it meant that you took the stub, if the game was rained out, uh, you took it along and you got a free ticket for, for another game. Now, it's now used metaphorically. So, you know, someone says, I can't see you on the Friday, but I'll take a rain check on that and we'll do it later. But it began in the, in the 1880s with American baseball and actual rain checks Brilliant. on baseball tickets, which I think is a lovely idea. Do you... Do you how, does that kind of Americanisation slang thing, where does that sit with you, Kel? I... I I, th I still think... No, it, no, no, we're not being swamped. We're not being swamped <laughs> by Hollywood. I think we only pick up words that we find useful. And we didn't have an expression that said rain check. You know, I'll, we, we won't do it this Friday, we'll do it later, I'll take a rain check on that. We didn't have an, a neat expression that said that. So we tend to only borrow things that are useful to us. I think we're very selective in what we pick up from Americans. We I, are not... I think we should have a, a drought check in Australia <laughs> or a bushfire <laughs> check or a flood check, yes. you know, a climate check. Um, now, this is very disturbing because a uh, writer to The Spectator and a viewer of Sky said that I had been using the word incredulous yes. and I'd been using it incorrectly. I need your help, Kel. Yes. Uh, so it, it, it is used occasionally to mean... Someone will say a sentence such as, well... It's incredulous that the government did X, Y and Z. No, it's not. It's incredible that they did X, Y and Z. And incredible and incredulous are really close, so it's easy to confuse them. The same... I, I looked at the email which Rowan passed on to me and this person mentioned that Sky's own Joe Hildebrand did it in the Daily <laughs> Telegraph and said, you've caught the disease from Joe. Blame him. <laughs> uh, incredible means it's not credible. We can't believe it. It's beyond belief. Incredulous means... I don't believe it. I'm sceptical. So, in other words, the, you, the event can be incredible, beyond belief. The commentator on the event is sceptical, incredulous. So, beyond belief or uh, sceptical, which are you trying to say? That's incredulous. That's incredible. We can get it right. Brilliant. Well, we don't have time to do literally, which we're going to do, but we will literally do that next week with Peter. Kel, thanks so much for coming here on Credulin. I remain incredulous. <laughs> so I actually said incredulous <laughs> instead of incredible.